For more on this, I'm joined now by Sean Van Diver. He's the co-director of the Truman National Security Project in San Diego, California. He's also an expert on security and emergency management. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for having me. You know, this happened in the movie theater, as we just mentioned. This happened three years ago in the state of Colorado. And the shooter in that case was just convicted last week. Do you think we'll see metal detectors in movie theaters in the near future? You know, I don't think that we're going to see metal detectors in movie theaters. Um, I think that I think we need to take a risk-based risk -based approach, much like the Department of Homeland Security takes to these sorts of things. And um, and while while movie theaters are particularly vulnerable places, I don't think we're going to continue to see people going there to to uh, to perpetrate these these heinous crimes. I do think, however, that if we if we keep flooding the streets with guns and we keep allow, allowing this this mass influx of, uh, of firearms, you know, things that are designed specifically for killing people and animals, um, that we're not going to see any decrease in, in the numbers of mass shootings. In fact, we're going to see them continue to increase. Um, you know, since of the 12 biggest, uh, the 12 shootings with the most fatalities, um, six of those have occurred since 2007, and that's just absurd. Sean, what's the answer here? You and I spoke uh, just last month uh, after the Charleston shootings, here we are again. I know that you're an advocate of what you call smart regulation, more mental health checks and, and gun training. How much of a difference would that make? And, and how would you go back and implement something like that? Well, Elaine, I would say that, um, that my proposal, the, 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 the policy I've been advocating for that you mentioned, is to require 40 hours of training to own a gun, along with um, a five-year cycle on mental health and background checks. Now. Depending on when when uh, Mr. Hauser's mental health issues began, uh, he may he may not have been able to purchase this gun legally, which he was able to do. He was able to purchase this gun legally. And if we had a a, a national system where whereby there was a regular check, a regular background check and mental health screening, like I said, about five years, five year increments, I, I think that we would have far fewer uh, far fewer felons and far fewer. Um, Folks with with some mental health issues on the streets with these firearms, these extremely dangerous firearms, and I think that we would see the number of shootings go down. As we said before, many Americans support the right to bear arms. I know you do as well. But in the dozens of mass shootings since Sandy Hook uh, took place a few years ago, we really haven't seen a case uh, where someone else had a gun at that scene and was able to subdue the shooter. I don't know if there's ever been a case like that. And and there's been the argument that a lot of these places are gun-free zones, so there's not, they're not even able to have a gun. Um, what is your take on all this? Well, Elaine, the facts are simple. The NRA's position that the only thing that stops a good guy with a gun, or a bad guy with a gun, is a good guy with a gun, is patently false. The, uh, without, without significant training requirements, I mean, a lot of states, California, I, I believe, has a eight-hour training requirement to own a weapon, and, or to, to have a concealed carry permit. And that's, you, you can barely learn all the parts of a firearm in eight hours. Um, you know, while I was in the Navy, we had to, we had to get, undergo weeks of training before we were able to, to have a gun and, and effectively employ it, whether it was on ship or in an urban environment. And, and the same is true for civilians. And if, if folks don't know how to effectively employ these weapons, they're, they become a danger. They become a danger to everybody around them and, and to their families at home. Um, it's the NRA's policies just don't work, and and they say that they're about the average everyday gun owner, and they're about safety, and they're about the safety of children. But that is absolutely not the case. Their policies are harming Americans, and it's unacceptable. And we shouldn't we shouldn't allow it. The U.S. president said gun control is a major failure of his presidency. And in recent weeks, we've seen a lot happen here with the Iran nuclear deal, gay marriage, Obamacare, these huge issues in the United States, but. When it comes to guns, members of the president's own party w won't pass it. So do you think we'll ever see a day in the United States where we will see more common sense gun laws or, or regulations? Well, Elaine, nothing happens without the political will. And I'll tell you that the only time people ever really seem to care about these, these gun issues is when there's fresh blood on the ground. And that is, that is a sad, sad truth. Um, I think that I think that it's time for Congress to put away, put aside the partisan bickering, and start caring about children, start caring about American citizens, and and get these things passed. I mean, the facts are that gun control 
the term gun control is not a popular political policy. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, when you get down to the individual policies, the background checks, the, uh, the federal database even, and the, the idea that, that online sales should not be allowed, uh, people, people support those, those specific initiatives. So I think maybe, maybe the issue is that we need to p pass piecemeal legislation rather than overarching uh, uh, one big general bill. Um, and I think that we might see su some success doing that. And the other way that it might happen is if individual states like California and New York and other uh, more traditionally progressive states started passing these, uh, these types of legislation. California is a great example. We have, we have far fewer gun deaths than, say, Louisiana because we have laws that protect not only children but citizens at large. We, we have a 10-round magazine maximum for uh, or ten rounds max, or yeah, ten rounds per magazine is the maximum amount you can have for any for any weapon, whether it's a rifle or a uh, or a handgun. We have a ten day waiting period, and we have all these requirements here in California, and, and we don't see the kind of gun deaths that we see in the South. The South has the has the highest rate of gun deaths in the country, and, and it's because of their lax gun laws and their their lack of political will to 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 get these things done. Sean Van Diver, uh, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us from San Diego.